right, um, good afternoon. So, yeah, we're going to talk a bit about um, what we're doing in the UK a little bit later. Uh, I'll start with an introduction. My name's Simon Warburton. I'm uh, Head of Product Development in the UK. I joined Aisha in January of this year after uh, working at Triumph for 18 years. Um, first as a design engineer, then as a, a product manager where I was responsible for defining the um, positioning and the specification of the motorcycles. So it was while I was doing that at Triumph about six years ago I first met Mark uh, when we were working on a project and Mark came up with the, the best proposals. Um, and I found Mark to be um, a great person to work with. I thought he knew a lot about motorcycles and motorcycling, which is great. So uh, it was quite a surprise to find myself on the same side as him now. And uh, now that we're actually working on the same side, I can say I haven't changed my mind. Good. <laughs> so um, yes, I'll talk a little bit about the UK in a few minutes. I'll hand over to Mark. Someone fixes my microphone. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm Mark Wells. I'm Thank global you. head of. I don't have to repeat all that then, do I? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, global head of product strategy, which is, um, I think, an overly auspicious title, to be honest. Mm. Um, and what that means is, is my job within uh, Royal Enfield is to be consumer-facing, to really understand and, and try and intuitively get what it is our customers want from the product, um, interpret that, and then really make sure that that's um, what we end up with in the, the products that we create and develop. So uh, my background is, as, as Simon said, I was a, an industrial designer. Um, I set up my own business uh, straight out of university um, and we spent 15 years working as industrial designers for uh, numerous companies including uh, Simon's former employer and Royal Enfield. We first started working with Royal Enfield back in uh, 2003, uh, we worked on, on the classic. Uh, we worked on the classic, and we also worked on the, the Continental GT. Um, and very much like Rod, when Siddharth uh, spoke to us uh, at the end of last year about joining the company, we voted with our feet. You know, we see the potential of this brand as, as being huge, um, and I'm very excited to be on board. Um, so obviously, as, as has been mentioned uh, a couple of times today, uh, ours is the... the oh. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Is that, is that clearer? Sorry. <laughs> so uh, ours is the, the oldest uh, motorcycle brand uh, in the world in continuous production, and it means that we've got the, the oldest product in continuous production. Um, and that product is, is iconic and has global recognition. Um, and it means that... The, our products can exhibit hallmarks um, that connect to the company's past in a way that isn't kind of creaky or nostalgic. You know, we have products that have authenticity and, 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 um, and heritage in what we do. So what is it about our products that have this enduring appeal, this ongoing appeal? Um, so when people purchase our products with a, a backstory like ours, they're buying not only the product, but the uh, emotional connection that, that comes with that. Um, so today, companies have to create product designs that are not only attractive to the, to the customer and meets their kind of generic needs, but also there's a distinctive character that runs throughout the entire product line. So, you know, Apple here have a, a very strong design language. Um, the way that you interface with the product, the way that you use it is, is consistent and clear throughout the product. And that's, that's really important in terms of, of product design and development. Um, and in advance and developing consumer economies, one of the primary focuses of, of goods and products is they allow consumers a way to express their identity, their, their personality. Um, and they're a, an indicator of, of lifestyle and, uh, and status. And so um, one of the, the phrases that, that we always come back to in product design is that watches tell more than time. And what we mean by that is that you know, a watch, the, the, the bare minimum a watch has to do is tell you the time. It, it tells you so much more about the person that's wearing it and what they're trying to say to the world. And even a decision not to wear a watch is, is a, an expression and a statement. Um, and so uh, the, the kind of birth of, of lifestyles in, in contemporary consumer society means that um, not only do the, the clothes they wear make that statement uh, and be a, f a fashion item also, but actually you know, the products they use can be that, that uh, expression of their unique self, and, and motorcycles are, are in, in no way an exception to that. Um, so you know, in today's world, um, which is changing so rapidly and quickly, I think 
people are, are hungry for a sense of connection. They, they want to feel some part of something. And, and Royal Enfield's products allow that to happen. They give our customers a, a, a connection and allow them to be part of a, consumer to, a, a community. So you know, these are, are clubs that exist in Royal Enfield, and, and they feel like they're part of a, a, a brotherhood almost. Consumers are, are not limited by this uh, previous modernist uh, notion that, that to be fashionable now has to be new or, or, or different. Instead, now consumers and manufacturers can be free to get inspiration from, from all sorts of historical con uh, contexts and, and apply them to new products and, and reinterpret them in new ways. So today there's a new crop of young consumers, and Rod alluded to this in, in the US, but this is a global thing. So this is both in India and, and, and in all of our export markets that are eager to own a, a motorcycle that um, displays their individuality. Um, so far from being uh, used merely as a, a means of, to commute um, or to get around from A to B, these are bikes that are an indulgence. They're a status symbol. They, they say something about you. They're, they're, they're a hobby as well as a means of transport. And that product that's existed since the 1950s, there are still certain truths about consumer behaviors back in the 1950s that are still true today. Um, and in many ways, the, the value proposition remains the same. Customers still want stylish, accessible, unintimidating, fun transportation, which says something about who they are with, with a, a level of authenticity and integrity. And I'll, I'll use the word authenticity repeatedly throughout this presentation because I think that's one of the, the key things that Royal Enfield has. We're authentic. We're, we're not made up. Um, and cool today is, is what it's always been, really. It's what it was for my father's generation. It's about having something that looks good and makes you feel good, but, but you know, it, it's, it's not, it doesn't break the bank. It's not the be-all and end-all. That's, that's cool. You do it effortlessly. Um, as I say, our brand has never been dormant, um, and our bullet motorcycles have never gone out of production. Um, and there's a, a kind of continuous line that runs all the way through. And, and, and as, again, as Rod alluded to, there's a, a sense in the market at the moment that, that, um, that this call is kind of of the moment, of its time. And lots of our competitors are currently kind of going through the old family photo albums and trying to find kind of excuses to do a new motorcycle. So, you know, BMW scramble up there and, or, or their, their 9T up there doesn't really link to their heritage, but, but you know, our, our product is, is genuine and authentic and, and has been true and correct throughout its history. Um, and our motorcycles aren't being sold on their technical aspects, and, and, and Siddhartha already talked about that, but they're being sold on, um, on emotion and, 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 and the aesthetic that they have, um, and, and again, on that authenticity. And because of this, you know, they appear to be resonating with this, this younger demographic. Um, and again, this is, this is both in India and, and globally. Uh, and our brand, we just don't need to have gimmicks. We don't need to have um, high tech or an abundance of features. We have a, a simple yet potent classic design to our products that is really instantly recognizable around the world. And, and, and there are many marketplaces where kind of our, our key design cues are visible and recognizable. And this classic nature gives a, an extra dimension to the appeal of the bike over and above the kind of, it creates a simple and unthreatening product that, um, that could appear boring if, if it was without those, those uh, gimmicks and attributes. But because of the classic appeal that we have, it kind of overcomes mm. that. So we make, the, 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 the core of the products we make are about being approachable, accessible, and you've heard about you know, accessibility within the marketplace today. They're stylish, and I think that's really important, and perhaps that's not been quite talked about as much, but, but for me, that's a really key point to what we sell, is that, that these products make a style statement. They're the, the kind of thing you want to be seen on. Um, they're fun. You know, they're not scary, they're not intimidating, and they're, they're, they're fun to use. They're comparatively lightweight, which means, again, that adds to the, the, uh, the unintimidating nation. It means you can jump on and jump off and... and um, use them on a day-to-day -day basis. They're not something that you have to plan to use. Um, and really, they're real-world motorcycles. They perform in a real-world manner. Today's generation, uh, again, as, as Rod alluded to, is 
have grown up surrounded by technical gadgets. Everybody's got a smartphone. And I think what our product offers is a tangible, visceral experience that, that you can't really get today from a smartphone. You don't, you don't interact, you don't embrace, you know, you, you hug a motorcycle, you don't do that with other products. Um, and I think Royal Enfields offer the ideal way to do that. And there's something alluring about the, 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 that classic appeal, the, the open exposure to the elements, the heightened awareness of your surroundings, the sensation you get from the engine vibrating you know, as you hold on to the motorcycle. On a Royal Enfield, you, you sit a little taller, you feel a little bolder, you've got that kind of projection of confidence. You appear to be in control, and I think those things are, are key to the products that we create. The experience is, is very much about the character. It's about riding the bike and not being taken for a ride by the bike. Um, you know, on, on so many of our competitors' larger capacity machines, they're about getting on and, and going as fast as you can or, or going as far as you can, whereas for us, it's about actually just enjoying the ride. That's, that's a really key part of, of who we are. Enjoying the experience and getting to the end of the ride and, and knowing you've hardly scratched the surface of the bike's capabilities. It's been a, a kind of a, a pleasurable experience. It's not, you've not come off scared of it or intimidated by it. For product designers um, and, in, and engineers, it's extremely important that we're in touch with the zeitgeist. We understand what's going on in the marketplace, and, and a key part of my job is, is making sure that, that I understand what it is the consumer wants. Um, so there's that important link between what we've all been talking about, about what the brand is, what the brand means, and what we do about that on our motorcycles. So yeah, Mark's job is to give product development side some direction, some clarity about what we're exactly doing. Um, and I thought we might talk a little bit about some, of the, some aspects of that. Um, we've talked a lot about character. Now for most motorcyclists, for most motorcycles, the character is very much about the engine. You know, it's completely different from in a car or a truck. The engine's right there. You can't ignore it. You can see it. You can touch it. You can feel it. So we've talked about thump. Um, that's not just about what you hear. It's what you feel. You know? And the thump comes from the torque of the engine, how hard the engine's pushing. Uh, but it's not about the numbers. Uh, you can have a, an engine that produces much more torque, but does it in a completely different way. You won't get that thump. The thump is all about low speed, opening up the throttle up, winding on the throttle from low speed and feeling you know, every stroke of the piston. That's where the character comes from. If you aim for um, high power, that means you inevitably have to spin the engine faster. That's how you get power. If it works better at high speed, it doesn't work so well at low speed. You don't get that same characteristic. You lose out on the feeling of the torque, even if your numbers are higher. You lose out on fuel consumption. You lose out on emissions. I mean, you need bigger catalysts. It, the whole thing gets more um, costly and difficult. Um, without giving too much away, we might well be working on some motorcycles with some higher performance levels than we currently have. Um, but it's important to say this is not about high performance motorcycles, just higher. Just to get to the sort of um, customer expectations that we see now in developed markets uh, like the US, Europe, Japan, etc., and that we confidently expect we will see uh, in our bastion markets in the coming years but not chasing power to be a, a sports machine. But ensuring that we remain competitive as that market grows and changes yeah. and evolves. Absolutely, it's like a future proofing. Yeah. Okay, uh, at least as important as the, uh, actually if you can move on more, more for me, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. At least as important as that feel is the sound. It's such a, an evocative part of a motorcycle. Um, now obviously we're governed by legislation. There are certain limits we have to meet. But those limits are for the whole vehicle. And on any motorcycle, um, again, with this exposed engine, it's a much more important uh, consideration. There's good sound and there's bad sound. If you ask any motorcyclist, they will agree that the good sound is the, uh, the throaty bark or growl, whatever you call it, that comes from the exhaust. You know, it comes out of that tailpipe. The bad stuff is the, any clatter, mechanical noise like that. You know, people think they're getting mechanical noise when they're getting a nice exhaust note, but if they've got a really rattly engine, they'll think there's something wrong with it. So there's things we can do. And we're in a very good position right now. Our bikes sound really good. It's a big part of their appeal. Our job is to improve where we can as we go forward, develop, and maintain that really good 
sound from the tailpipe uh, as legislation gets tougher and tougher. There's things we can do on uh, gear design, on gear manufacture, on engine cover design, lots of stuff we can do. And I think that is a very key part of our brand at the moment. You, know, you talk to any consumer in India and outside of India, and they talk about the thump, and that's, that's something that I think you'll all know living in India, that, that, that that's really important that we maintain that and we keep that going forward. That's a, a part of who we are. Yeah, another thing I'm sure that's, you know, if you, a big thing from your point of view, Mark, is, is the aesthetics. We talk about um, the authenticity, and that definitely comes from the classic aesthetic. Uh, it's also a big component of the character. You know, you could have a bike with the same um, physical attributes. If it didn't have that classic style, it wouldn't have any, anywhere near as much character. And good styling comes from direction from your side of the business. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but also from really good integration, as I think Mark mentioned before, of the product design, so the industrial engineers working with the engineering designers. And that comes from having them in the same location, communicating all the way through, and getting a bike that really is authentic, it grows out of the engineering. I, mean, I think uh, going forward that uh, poses lots of challenges for us because to keep the, the classic appeal, the classic aesthetic that we had, having the products at the moment um, as legislation comes in yeah. becomes harder and harder. So again, that really is about industrial design and, and engineering working very closely to ensure that the that we don't compromise the aesthetic in order to meet the, the requirements, but vice versa, we still meet the requirements in a way that, that allows us to keep selling uh, going forward. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an ongoing um, development job. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing in, in the UK. So we are establishing uh, a new development team in the UK uh, to grow our capabilities, to bring a, a, a more global uh, point of view into our product development going forwards. Um, we are located in the heart of England, um, on the left-hand side there, and the reason we're there, if you look at the next zooming in, uh, next uh, map zoomed in, is that is where all the engineering goes on. There's a very good ecosystem there for getting very good people. We have engineering excellence in Rolls-Royce, JCB, CAT, um, Triumph just down the road, Jaguar Land Rover, and a whole host of smaller scale, high-end automotive um, suppliers and manufacturers. We've also got some very good testing facilities. Myra is the UK national um, dedicated test facility. We are located here, will be located on the Bruntingthorpe site. It's an interesting site. It was built in 1942 for, as an aircraft, uh, an airfield. It served as a uh, strategic bomber base in the 60s, 50s and 60s, hence the very long runway. So that's three kilometers long, which is ideal for testing. But since 1972, it's been an automotive development center. We've been based on site there with easy access to the test uh, facility, which is great for us. There's a few other industries in there, all based around the aerospace and automotive uh, fields. If you could click that. So um, we're getting towards the end of the design stage now. It's a little bit of work to do. We're expecting to start building in February to be actually in the facility by the end of next year. Uh, we want this to be, it's obviously going to be a functional semi-industrial building, but we want it to be a place we're proud of, that we're proud to go and work in, and that works perfectly. Uh, one point there, it'll very rarely look like that. The sky is very rarely that blue in the UK. If you're designing this building in Chennai, you're thinking about ventilation and uh, air conditioning. We're thinking about insulation and heating. But. <laughs> So we are in the setup stages. Uh, I'm not going to go through the structure. I mean, it's obviously a fantastic opportunity to develop um, a development, a, a team from the ground up. You can put the structures in that you want. Um, I'm not going to go through it. That's just to illustrate where we are in building the team. The green boxes are where we fill the uh, a position. White, we haven't got anybody. Yellow, we are in the middle of in negotiations. Uh, one of those yellow boxes turned green just before I came out here, which is great. So we've got just under 40 staff. We expect to get it between 60 and 70, depending on some of the projects we've got coming along next year, uh, how they are defined, how many engineers we need. And we, we are getting a really good range of experience in there. Uh, we've started pulling very experienced guys in, people who've got uh, directly relevant experience in developing motorcycles. Obviously, we have Triumph on the doorstep. We've got people in from Ducati and Yamaha. We have people from diverse fields as Rolls-Royce, as uh, Mercedes Formula One, as Jaguar Land Rover. And all these people are giving us 
very good insight and input into developing our processes. Now, one of our um, early priorities is to develop a, a development process, what we call the new product implementation process. Now, this is something that is going to be common between UK and Chennai. We are working in parallel. We're working on different projects, but we're working together, and we're all working on global products. So the idea of this development process, it is a map, a plan to take you through development, which has enough structure to be robust, but it has uh, a lot of flexibility built in there. Every single project is different. You can't take, uh, to coin a phrase that's been used here, a cookie cutter approach. You can use a guide, but you have no two development projects that need exactly the same amount of resources, exactly the same actions going on. So that's our uh, challenge. There's more work to be done. We've arrived at the generic plan. We have work to do on harmonizing the global um, uh, validation process, on putting all these timelines into the overall plan, uh, planning resource throughout the business, but we've made a very good start. Okay, okay. Um, guys, that's about it from us. Um, we've got a bit of time afterwards for questions, so uh, hope to meet you then. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now take a break.